Hello everybody! I am BP Dolls, and this is the very first Dong World update. So the first thing you may notice is that, what? We're not even at the hands-on museum, what's this? Well, quarantine, and so Dominant World is virtual. So, each of the Dominant World builders are going to be making their own little segments. This is the floor plan. Jo it it um, starts with Joel, and goes to Gabe, then Connor has a little clip with corn. And then Derek and Alex and Conrad. And then, um, also, don't mind the weird names, we're just weird. And then, yes. And, and then it will end with me, and the finale is up here, and there's a plug sweet cheese sign for no reason. We're gonna be video calling through the whole process of the building process. I said process twice, and, um, it's gonna be pretty fun. My word choices are getting really bad, so I guess I'm gonna end the vlog here. Bye! Hi! Don't roll update. So, the structure is halfway done. It has half as many dominoes as it used to be, as, um, in other words, 50% which is about one halfway to the way done. Right now I believe it's gonna have like 25,090 something structures, or dominoes when it's done. But right now it has about half of that. <laughs> I think Gabe and I are the only ones who have started on their segments. Connor and Derek are finishing up some projects. I think Joel's planning, I mean planning, Lyle's doing, I don't know, being Lyle. Okay, so let's pretend it's the end of day one. And the first trick I built for this machine is this cup powered car. Basically the string is wound around the back axle so as the weight falls it unwinds the axle which makes the wheels rotate and makes the car go forward so it looks like this. Nice approach! Okay test! Nice. Okay, test. Wow. It actually worked! Yes! Yes! Oh my god! That's amazing! My plans for this morning were to do uh, a track trick that would cover the length of this orange rod. Because I had this pre-planned trick with this red cup, where it's pretty simple. The ball basically goes into the cup. And it flips over really fast. This is actually, a, a, I think, a new idea. It's based on, it's somewhat based on Gabe's unraveling connect structure from spicing it up too. And uh, as opposed to doing three rotations, it does four rotations. And what that means is I can have this track initially like this, and it'll sort of tumble all the way down to here. Nice in! All double dang incredible dying ideas right, people. That did not really turn out well. Alright! Okay, I'm actually gonna be. As you can see, I've perfected this wall trick to a point where I'm comfortable with giving it a color combination. I'm sorry, this triangle design over here is pretty generic, but basically just triangles fall and then the middle triangles fall, but there's also gonna be lines that are like crossing through. It's gonna be cool, but generic, but cool. Uh, I wonder if it'll actually work. Okay, whatever. Yep, 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 how's it feel? No, why does this happen? <laughs> no, 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 no! <laughs> Life is a joke. <laughs> okay, so we are building a thumbnail worthy centerpiece clip. Um, we've had something like this in the past two years of Down the World, so we still want to do a screen link clip with it. And here is a test of what part of it is going to have to do. Alright, so this is the end of day two. Uh, ignore all this, it doesn't exist yet. Today I made uh, a crane mechanism. The ball goes in, it extends all the way down, does a 90 degree little twist, drops it here, goes down the track. Um, and then I also decided to make this a one ball path because I sort of decided that the wow factor of a one ball path outweighs the difficulty that it takes to make one. I made a little elevator module on the end, which was actually pretty easy to make considering there's plenty of room for the elevator shaft underneath the end of this track. Oh, it's going. What? 
be up, Dick Drake Domino Dude. I am Domino Fans, and welcome back to another behind the scenes. This structure failed earlier, and I didn't really like the design anyway, so now there are these square things. Um, as you can see, there's some cool color contrast with this stupidly long mini domino line, and then another stupidly short mini domino line with some cool color contrast. The mini domino line is broken right now. This is because if I give any little vibration to the table, this domino wall is slightly sloped right here. I don't know if you can see it, but that causes the mini domino line to fall. That's happened at least 10 times now. So, I put some cards on this domino. It's ever so slightly um, elevates the domino. So the, so the other domino should be in position, so it's completely flat. If you look at the finale structure, <gasps> there are dominoes dangling. And I don't really care, because it's not knocking over the structure, so I don't need to. So this is what it looks like. Try again. Try again. Try again. And so a couple of things to note about this. <laughs> One is on the end of this track, I have like a little shock absorber thing to make sure that it goes down really smoothly because I didn't really know, there's no way I could have like a little barrier here because the launchers need to be in this path and so it has to be attached to the track domino itself. Another thing, this little janky uh, leap day lever setup is actually what causes the reaction to happen, what causes it to go one increment at a time between each of the lever presses. And I initially had this, the reaction lever right here and it was like way, it was like way off in terms of timing and so I had to make uh, a string connection all the way up here so that every time the billiard ball reaches this point, uh, it triggers the reaction. I initially thought that I was gonna have to have some like off table weights or like really heavy wrenches and stuff. Turns out no, all I need is like a couple of magnets and a heavy metal marble. And that's like more than enough weight to react the launcher. Yo, 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 kids and epic gamers. Today is BP Dolls and I am back with 10,000 dominoes. So as you can see, this is a wall. But what is this? <gasps> it's a darker thing. So that's pretty cool. So basically I, okay, I need to stop saying basically. It's getting annoying, I'm sorry. So, <laughs> so I have these speed balls. They're pretty cool. They're basically all, <laughs> they're all, <laughs> I think that today is like kind of the point where the project is really starting to come together and it makes me really happy. Especially because Incredible Comedies is good. Everything about the setup is about the setup because it's all part of the setup. And that's why it is part of the setup. Okay. Thank you everybody for watching this Day 6 update. And I hope to see you all in the next progress update of Donald World 23 and a half. This was actually inspired by a trick from the Pitakura Suichi new collection. They did a trick with corrugated cardboard and little traffic cones. The best thing to do with Pitakura Suichi ideas is to just push them one step further. Instead of just using objects that don't really do anything, I decided to make them tracks, which could act as track for ball. It's very difficult to make rails that are this sturdy. These have to be pretty much rock solid. The other concern I had was that all three platforms have to be at separate levels because when they slide under, they overlap. Hey guys, it's Twig at the end of day seven of Domino World. A ton of my footage got corrupted and it's now lost, including a lot of my vlogs and also the working take of this clip. So I've actually set it up um, from scratch a second time. Um, anyways, to make up for the lost footage, check out this nice lighting. Like, mmm, very sexy. Like, okay, sorry, that was really bad. All right, another dumb the world. Ah! Wow, thanks, Green Ben, for ruining my life. I thought I'd just give you guys a little thought process thing about this structure right here. I wanted some type of thing to go right here because I worried if it was just a completely freestyle, then it started to get a little boring. And after a while, I started, I went on Google Drawings and started putting shapes together into a design I like. Now, there's one thing I like to know about the structure which makes me especially like it. There is no mini dominoes or like any type of capital connections or like, or like weird dominoes that are like stacked on top of each other in weird ways and stuff like there is here. I think the best new structure designs are the ones that are like just completely organic in that every domino is placed like in a completely usual manner. 
In Hevish 5's Amazing Quadruple Spiral video, she showed a part where something went early, and it kind of looked like the falling speedwall was chasing a line falling on top of the speedwall. So I decided it'd be cool if I could turn that into a screen link clip, with the idea being intentional. Here's a test for the timing of the trick. So while I was building this trick, I realized I wanted to make the rest of the setup kind of interact with the speed wall before it fell. So I thought it'd be cool if I did these domino rally bridges. One of them's just on the ground and the other one's elevated. They'd be through the speed wall. I still need to build the rest of the speed wall yet. But I thought that'd be a really cool way and I don't think anyone's done it before. Oh. This is a diamond world update, and today we have 200,000 bomb in the setup. And then it's looking pretty nice. We got this green, and then we have some yellow. I don't even know where yellow is. That's yellow enough. And then we have 200 dominant builders. First, there's the Invention 11, the Invention 12, the Invention 13, and then Twig. Those are all our 200 dominant builders. Part 13 is joining the domino world, everybody. Mm hmm. Wanted to use a car to go across both of the tracks. It didn't work, so the wind-up skateboard had to be sort of the replacement, but I cut out or printed out a little muck muck, uh, because normally uh, it's sort of a tradition for me to use muck muck in my machine every single year, um, but I don't really have access to the uh, stuffed animal version, and so I printed one out to put on the skateboard. But yeah, I will demonstrate how this trick looks right here. There's not really a lot of space for my hand to get back here. Like, my arm is really stretched out here from this, from this point. And so to solve this, I decided to make a poking stick. But what's better, it's a pokey Porygon stick. And so I have Porygon on the end of this long uh, rod sequence here. <laughs> and then Porygon sort of taps the ball if I can reach it, and then starts off the machine. And that just makes it easy for me to film it, because I have to film it from pretty much all the way back here. So I figured out this color combination, but I think I'm going to move it over here because I think there could be a better color combination that could go over here because I think that this color combination is a little bit unfitting, so I'm going to make a better color combination. I'm going to move this one over here in case you didn't know. I'm trying to figure out a way out of the pathing crisis that I had created for myself. There were a lot of things to figure out about where to place certain connections to navigate all of the tricks in the machine, and without creating a lot of confusion and a lot of large skips across sections with you know, long string pulls. The biggest compromise I had to make was this long trick track segment, but this track here was pretty much the central point of all of that. It gets used three times. The first time is when the green ball rolls down, and that's what releases the red ball for the scissor lift trick. The second time is when this marble from the self-powered car goes into the ruler lift, and that tips the track in the other direction by pressing down on this side, which allows this lever to fall out of the way, like that. This was a cool trick that I decided to make mostly as a connection, but then it ended up kind of graduating to trick level. And then to navigate this section over here, I have this section of rails. So the ping pong ball, the green one, is light enough that it doesn't separate the rails, which are being held together by this rubber band here. But of course, the, the blue ball is, so it's able to separate the rails and fall through and go to a different domino connection. Cause this is a setup that's pretty big. It's my third or second biggest setup all time. It has like 15,000 dominoes. And I'm nervous in case you didn't know. Ah, uh, <laughs> lol. <laughs> This is what it looks like. Um, this is the setup. I think it's a pretty cool setup. I'm happy I'm done. Generally thinking about the event, I am nervous. It might fail. It might work. I don't know. But let's see what happens. It's going, it's going. Oh, kill the pig, kill the pig. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah! Come on, come on. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go, let's go. Okay. It's all worked so far. I'm very jealous of Brady's ability to make working setups. Okay, now it's going under the bridge. It's going under there. It's going, it's going, it's going, 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 going. And it almost fell, but it didn't, it didn't, it didn't. It's going, it's going, it's going. And it keeps going. The ball goes, it goes. And it moves, it moves very, very slowly. But it's going, it's going, it's making it. It's going, it did it, yes, yes.
yes, 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 go Brady! Yes, that was so suspenseful! It's gonna be so good in the final video! Oh my god! Okay, it's going, it's going, it's going, it's going! It's all working! It's all working! The speedball fell! It go, it go, it go! Go, go, go! Yes, Brady! Ah! There's two days until we're supposed to post the video, and hopefully myself, Chase, Lyle, and Derek and Alex can all get their parts done today. I just finished building. I was originally gonna do like a Four Seasons inspired thing, and I did for quite a time with like fall here, winter here, spring, summer, uh, but like, I don't know, I just kinda ended up doing whatever I wanted because it is kinda all over the place. Here in my garage, just to film this machine here, uh, but you know what I'm all like more than this machine? Knowledge. And that's why I'm going to talk about my thoughts about this machine. And so it's been a while since I uh, built a machine. And this one was built on deadline. And it was built in the evening in my spare time. I definitely rushed it. I wanted to fill a table in time to meet this deadline. And it kind of shows. You can see that I used a lot of larger tricks because I wanted to fill space. I have a non-linear style, but some things weren't planned out very well. For example, this heavy transition from this uh, black cylinder dropping to releasing that car was very difficult because I saved it for one of the later transitions and then I didn't leave myself a lot of room to work with. I was hemmed in by this track on this side and this lever on this side. This machine was very painful to test because there were a lot of free moving objects that were difficult to control, like this box, that car, and there were a lot of objects that were used in multiple ways or surrounded by the machine, like this spinning tower. The counterweight that spun this around could affect multiple things, so I could fix one thing but cause problems elsewhere. Oh, the epic sexy something. PT and WDT. Right now is a good time to do my concluding thoughts on the whole behind the scenes and the event in general. I'd just like to say thank you to everybody. And thank you to everybody for your for watching all the way through if you have and for your support. It, it means a lot and I'm so happy that I'm able to host this every year, even even in quarantine. I'd also like to thank all the builders in the event. Um, Joel, Conrad, Derek, Alex, Lyle, Chase, and Gabe for being so dedicated to making your clips absolutely the best that you can and like you all make masterpieces. I'm I'm still kinda shook at how good some of your clips are. This is a wild ride. I never expected that I'd be able to set up fifteen thousand dominance in eleven days considering how much time I think about my project, but here we are. It happened. So I'd just like to say thank you so much to everybody for watching, for continuing to support my channel and just Overall, for being cool people, I very I appreciate my audience a lot, and I'm glad that a lot that you guys have still stick around to see me upload my videos. That's all. I'd just like to say thank you. Bye, everybody. See you in the next video, whenever that is. <laughs>